Nancy and Emmett, thank you so very much uh, for joining us this evening and for all of your hard work uh, on Design Show 2021. Um, uh, your uh, uh, collection is Signal Action. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we were um, looking for a theme that was a bit broad to really allow for us to really highlight a lot of different types of work because I think the work submitted to the competition this year was very diverse. Um, but at the same time, we were looking for kind of like a through line uh, that would allow us to kind of put together this collection and have it all make sense. So this idea of signal and action, um, actually Nancy puts this into words really well. I'll let her um, speak to this in a second, but it's basically about projects that um, engage the senses and that can be like our physical senses, but also it can be engages the brain in some form of play um, or curiosity or awareness. And um, I think it's, we were looking for pieces that were more than just basic communications, but were actually engaging the viewer in unique ways. So that was kind of our connecting thread. Um, Nancy, would you like to expand on that? Yeah, so we wanted to be able to kind of sum it up in one sentence. So we came up with design that sparks awareness, curiosity, and emotion by activating the mind and senses through participation. And so that could be interactive work, but also a call to action in some socially engaged design work. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, so so tell me, what were some of your favorite pieces uh, uh, in your collection? Uh, Nancy, you go first. Yeah. So one of our favorite pieces was Synthesis uh, by Priyam Shah, which is a um, interactive multi-sensory exhibition that's taking the viewer from analog to digital design. And so one of the things that I really appreciate about it is that the visitor has the opportunity to break, reconstruct, and overall just manipulate compositions throughout. Um, not only is there this opportunity for kinesthetic engagement from the visitor, but there's kinesthetic typography throughout. There's a tactile wall that is not only encouraging um, the sense of touch in different ways, but there's several layers to it. There's a layer of visual and auditory qualities that are presented. Um, so this piece was really aiming to create um, a new sense of memory through design. We often think about design as visual, but by activating all the senses, it's really creating a new experience and sparking new awareness and curiosity. And I think, um, you know, Nance and I are both museum people. So we were immediately drawn to this piece, of course, and it really fascinated us in terms of what it was presenting, like new ways of sort of engaging museum audiences. And so it was really at the core of our theme. I think when we looked at this piece, and it's it's very like directly referencing the senses. That's kind of where the theme came from in general. So yeah, that was our thesis piece, I think, for the entire collection. Definitely. And I work in museum education specifically, and I'm very interested in multimodal learning, um, digital interactive. So this piece really spoke to me. And actually that um, makes me think of another piece uh, that we wanted to highlight, which was called Explore Very. I think that's how you pronounce it, Very, Very. And um, one of the things that's great about it is actually, I think it's catering to a number of different learning styles. So this is a piece that's trying to explain what variable typography is, which I think is gonna be very interesting for design audiences to check it out. And it comes in two different forms. It comes in a website, and then it also comes in this sort of physical card blocked interactive tower. And I think we were both drawn to the fact that it was able to sort of tell this story about variable typography in these two different ways, which allows different people to kind of interface with it um, in different ways. But I thought the website was very, very well done. Um, it has this very kind of clean segmented scrolling interface that sort of guarantees that the information is properly presented in the viewport. It's just very slick, it's very contemporary. And it's also very funny, like it goes step by step explaining what a variable typeface is. And then it has an interactive element that allows you to manipulate the typography to further understand what the point is. And then the language is actually very like comfortable and casual and friendly, which I think makes it, you know, 
that much more impactful. And then the, the large um, printed piece is this essentially a giant tower of cards that are illustrating kind of the matrix structure of how a variable typeface works. And I just found that really fascinating, like seeing the behind the scenes of how a typeface is created in a giant physical form and then allowing people to interact with it seemed like a lot of fun and it looked really good, so. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, and it seemed very accessible too. As somebody who is not com coming directly from the design world, it helps you, you know, get an educational sense of the typography. And it also takes it out and from the 2D into the 3D space, which I really appreciate. Absolutely. So you both mentioned the fact you're from the museum world. I love that as, a, as kind of a team here uh, that we put together. Um, how does that experience, how does that background, do you think, play into uh, you know, your collection? You know, my first thought is when we went through the collection, like I was immediately looking for kind of uh, like topical themes. Like I was looking for connections between what pieces were about. But that felt like it was a little too limiting. And I think where we ended up is very reflective of how we work with museums. So we work with institutions that are um, presenting lots of different types of work. So lots of different subject matter. So we were immediately really drawn to like, what are the more like structural um, or contextual ways that pieces are working as opposed to like, what is the actual subject matter of the piece? So I, I sense that Nancy and I were both sort of on the same wavelength when it came to like looking for pieces that activated, um, you know, reactions essentially in, in different ways. Yeah, I definitely agree with Emmett. And I think when we were first going through the process, we were already making connections and finding um, pieces that we wanted to center the theme around. Um, so I really appreciated working with Emmett because it seemed like we were on the same page throughout. Love it, love it. So is there anything that you saw in the work uh, that uh, is gonna influence your own uh, design work moving forward? Well, you know, I, I saw a piece, so there's a piece called Blank Space, um, which is a really elaborate packaging system for chocolate, which I love. So, um, but it actually, it reminded me of, I curated an exhibition recently um, called Designs for Different Futures and it dealt with a lot of speculative design. And this is the piece I think in the entire competition that came closest to that. So essentially they created this packaging that includes um, fictional sort of journals and maps of this sort of future astronauts exploration of four unknown planets and created this entire world um, and I think what it does really well is it uses the packaging and the way you sort of open it and the tactile quality of it and the pacing to sort of create this narrative speculative experience. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that I felt like fit really well into, into things that I'm really interested in and creating that kind of like um, science fiction experience through like the simple act of packaging, I think it was very inspiring. Love it. Um, for me, I would say that one piece that I gravitated, gravitated towards is the Planned Parenthood Prescription Refill Program. Mm -hmm. And that piece is really about um, fostering awareness and empowerment and really putting forward the values of Planned Parenthood and contraceptive rights. Um, and so I really think that the bright colors, the imagery draw you in and give you a lot of energy and kind of reminds you that this is a social movement and there's a community around it. Um, and so I think I dabble a little bit in social justice work in my printmaking and artist practice. And that is something that I am gonna take with me as a result of this is that there needs to be some energy and excitement to continue the movement and continue the call to action. I love it. Any recommendations for designers in Minnesota that you see, you know, something that you, you didn't see or you wanted to see more of, um, uh, things that, 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 you know, were inspiring for you? There's some, I feel like I used to see more, um, 
a lot more like bicycle posters. That's one way of describing like a lot more like Minnesota-esque like projects, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which I didn't see this year as much of, but I don't know if that's just indicative of like how the submission process went. Um, but projects that people are very like personally invested in in particular communities right are always really gratifying for us to see um, but I don't, it's kind of a weird answer though no i think that's great yeah i was just impressed with you know how diverse the submissions were i think there's a lot of different types of design happening in minnesota and i think I get most excited about the projects that feel like they're a direct sort of representation of the community or the culture that the designer is a part of. And yeah, Minnesota has always been really great at pushing out a ton of really good design. So that was good to see. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. There were some pieces that were very culturally specific and I would love to see more of that in the future. Um, and beginning to see some pieces that spoke to the very specific social causes. And I think that is another area of growth as well. Awesome. Well, Nancy Emmett, thank you both so very much. We really appreciate all the hard work you put in for Design Show 2021. Uh, and um, I can't wait to see all of the pieces in your collection. Yeah, thank you so much, Brock. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brock, and everyone at AIGA.